Is the housing market a rerun of 2008? Yes. Plain and simple. Well, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan, guys. <laughs> My name is Alex. That's Kirby over there. Um, so how, okay, so that's interesting. How is it a, a rerun? In, in what way? A rerun, a rerun, I was using that first one just uh, for drama and effect. But the thing is, is everybody believed that the financial crisis, that houses across the United States dropped 40, 50, 60 percent. Right. That's about what everybody's thinking. Right. Yeah. But the truth is, I mean, if you look at any matrix uh, during 2008, everybody can agree we was in a recession then financial crisis 2008. That was the big bum hug, humbug moment. The price, and I'm looking right here at the stats right now, condos depreciated only by 12%. That was how much it depreciated. Single family homes depreciated 19%. That's the number. Now, if somebody's saying that's the national number, that's the national average. Now, if you go to certain places like Arizona, Nevada, you know, here in Florida, you saw prices drop dramatically well worse than that but but those are localized areas where they declined by that much it wasn't a it wasn't a all across the nation properties was falling in the secondary markets what i mean by secondary markets is the markets where somebody might have a second third or fourth home in during a financial crisis everybody said forget all the other stuff besides the home i live in and we just going to Leave that at bank. And those markets was in Florida, Arizona, and Nevada, those type of areas. That's where it was at. I mean, literally here in Florida, properties was dropping 50, 60% because people were just walking away. But that wasn't a natural average. In Texas, for instance, in Texas, I just bought a house and I told you about it and I've shared it on the channel many times. I bought a house in December of 2007 at the tippy, tippy top of the market. The market crashed. And I still sold the house because I was gone. So 2009, I sold the house for the exact same amount that I paid for it. I didn't use ages and stuff like that to, uh, you know, take out that 6%. But the price decline in Texas, it just went flat in Texas. Because Texas market was insulated because of, you know, oil prices and things like that. And that's a big oil rich state. So we didn't have that problem of, Houses decline, we just didn't have appreciation. And it's different in other parts of the country that housing prices didn't depreciate as much as, you know, the scare stories of the Floridas. You know, some parts of California was like that also. Uh, you know, Arizona, things like that. So will could we have could we have a national decline of 12% in prices of homes? Yeah. Could we have 19% of prices of homes over a longer period of time? Yeah. That's possible. But the 40, 50, 60, 70 percent declines, no way in hell that's happening. What you got? No, that's interesting. So like, so was that for, uh, I mean, you know, because I was like five years old. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't five. I wasn't five, guys. I was like, I was like 11. Okay? Like six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was 11, 12. But uh, so was that, was it just the hot markets or like you said, like states like Nevada, Arizona, Florida? Uh, maybe California that had those huge drops, but the rest of the states uh, kind of balanced out the national average, like Texas and stuff. Right. And that's, and that's what happened. I mean, like the places like Oklahoma, uh, Texas, things like that. And, you know, Texas is a big state and they got a lot of properties, but there was no decline in pricing in Texas. I mean, you know, maybe one or 2%, you know, something minor, but it wasn't the huge drops. Now, like I'm saying, in those big states, those big hot areas, you know, the touristy areas, they got hit hard. Because again, like I said, I know people personally who had homes in Florida and they but they lived their main house was up north somewhere. They literally walked away from their house, their secondary home here in Florida and just said, forget it. I'm just caring about worrying about making sure that I have enough money to take care of the house that my family is going to live in. And so a lot of people walked away from houses and that, those were the people, that's where you got the big drops at, you know, the foreclosures, the short sales and things like that. But it wasn't going across the board like that in every inch and square of the United States. 
Okay. Yeah, that that makes sense how I can even it out. Because, I mean, I grew up in Florida, so, like, all I saw was people talking like the world was ending. I remember people buying houses in, like, 2007 for $400,000, which, looking back, was, it. you know, it's crazy to think, like, say I bought my house, right, for 200000 and then, uh, or a little over 200000 But, you know, 15 years before that, at the peak of the market, right before the drop, People were buying homes for four hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, and I was seeing that and people losing their homes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, was it a crazy time here in Florida? Yeah, but like I said, I was I came from a perspective of being in Texas, and the gas prices. I mean, at the height when you know gas prices were four and five dollars in Texas, yeah, that was pretty bad. But you wasn't hearing about you know home prices. I mean, you saw people lose houses still. But the bank was taking the houses and still putting them back on the market for, you know, what they owed on the mortgage. It wasn't it wasn't no cutting prices and people making, you know, the bank making less or taking haircuts and things like that. You just didn't see it. Like I said, it was very insulated as far as you remember, because a lot of people lost their jobs and stuff like that. But Texas, a lot of the economy in Texas is based off the oil market and the oil market was still thriving. I'm not saying the economy didn't slow down in Texas, but it wasn't like the stories you've seen all over the place, you know, uh, like the Californias, like the Floridas and things like that, especially not Nevada. Nevada was a ghost town, but things like that. You didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely interesting. I mean, I only grew up in Florida, saw the Florida market. Yeah. And, and I mean, like I came to Florida and I took, I took, uh, advantage i took advantage of you know right. because the florida market took a minute to recover because remember the crisis was in 08 and and i still i'll never forget this deal it was down south lehigh acres area i bought the duplex from this gentleman now he bought it 2000 i want to say 2012 2011 uh the so he bought it in 2011 2012 the duplex was just built in 2006 he only he bought it from somebody else who lost it and he only paid eighty eight thousand dollars for damn near brand new duplex. And then from 2012 to 2016 or 17, when I bought it. Somewhere around there, it was somewhere around there. I bought it maybe 15. But um, anyway, I I bought it from him for two hundred and fifteen thousand. So it's still appreciated there. And then now those same duplex is going for four hundred and fifty Still today, it's going for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars each. Like if you go look on Zillow and look in the Lehigh Acres area, and the the prices are still up there. So it took a longer time for it to come back, but it was some opportunity right then, especially in these uh, tertiary markets like we spoke about before. But even now, if you go look, uh, you know, according to the government and the mass media, we're not in even in a recession, but. 42 percent of the homes in nevada or las vegas area 42 percent of them are vacant are just flat out vacant so just think if people got their houses up for sale and 42 percent of them are vacant those people either rent or have a mortgage somewhere else and they're paying a mortgage on that property that's sitting there vacant yeah, there might be some people that paid it off cash or whatever, yada, yada. But how long will that last where they're paying a the rent one place, mortgage in another place? And then if all this, you know, new, uh, noise and talk about financial crisis and, you know, recession comes about, how long will they be able to hold that up going into 2003, especially, you know, with interest rates and then, you know, unemployment expected to increase? How, are, how long will they be able to hold up that before they start dropping the prices on those homes just to get them off the books and start selling? Could we see that? Could we see a 12% decline? Yeah, we could. I mean, especially people still got wish pricing on their homes now. So, of course, the wish pricing is, you know, that'll come down. But so 12% down from where we was at. Yeah, but I think it's going to be more smoothed out. It's going to be 12% really totally across the nation. Like Florida, you might get a 12% decline in prices from the wish pricing that people, you know, had up. But 
it won't be a 12% or 19% value drop in the property because the value is the value. The price that people sell it for is just something that they're hoping to get. But it won't be a 12%, 19% value drop in the properties. But I believe people will start lowering their prices more. And if you look on the MLS now, you see price drops left and right. So could we get could we get the medium home price down 10% from where it's at? You know, three, 350, you know, 325 ish level on a national level. We could, you know, if the interest rates stay high, people scared to buy longer, you know. Yeah, we can get that if people are forced to start selling, especially if we get that unemployment rate high, you know, in the fours or five, I mean, like four and a half to five and a half, something like that. You know, people might have to offload houses, be four sellers. We could get some drop in pricing, but it's not going to be what everybody think the financial crisis was of, oh, 40, 50 percent drops in Florida. That's what it was nationally. No, nationally, it was only 12 percent, you know, for condos, 19 percent for homes. And from which pricing we can come down to that level, but from a value of the actual property minus the wish pricing, there's no way in hell we're coming down 12 to 19 percent on homes. And is, is that because of like materials costs? Um, is why, why it's not going to come down like that? Right. Uh, no, because if you remember, or, uh, well, you don't remember because minimum wage. Yeah, you don't remember because. Like yeah, you don't remember because you was only three and a half years old at the time. But <laughs> back in 2008 and things like that, people literally bought houses as long as they had a heartbeat. I mean, literally. I mean, you probably heard people say it all the time. And a lot of people had, didn't actually live through it. You know, they say that, but they didn't live through it. I'm telling you personally, from my own experience, I had no job. Zero job. I had... A VA loan because I was in the military, but the VA loan for people that don't know, only thing that is the government, the uh, veteran affairs is guaranteeing the loan if I don't pay for it. But you still have to go, you actually go through more underwriting with the VA loan than you do the FHA loan. I literally showed up. They asked me for my income statements or whatever. I told them I, I don't have a job. All thing I have is a VA loan because I didn't know how it worked. I thought the VA loan was like, oh yeah, he's good. And then after I looked it up, after I left the bank that day, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to get the house. Then they was telling me, they just kept going through the process. And I was like, yeah, you got the house. They approved the loan. I had no job. It wasn't no, I had a side hustle there. I had no job. No pennies coming in, no nothing. And they still approved it. So, but, so just think, if that was me, it was a lot of people like that. It was a lot of people with you know, not enough income to fulfill their debt obligation and the banks were signing off on it. And then you, so those people, of course, you know, recession got bad. You couldn't afford it. I mean, eventually during that time, I got a job to keep the mortgage payments or whatever. But so those people, they would buy two, three and four homes and they couldn't get renters in there, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so they couldn't afford the homes and then those foreclosed. Then the people that all the people that lost their jobs, especially in the financial sector and all the other things that was going on, they lost their jobs so they couldn't afford their home. So that compounded the situation. But the truth of the matter is back in 2008 is a lot of people who had homes that shouldn't have homes, but we had more of a supply of homes than there was actually demand. That's why more people was getting homes, getting homes. And then, of course, the Bush administration passed that everybody should be eligible for a home deal or policy, which uh, it was good in theory but in application it was terrible and that's really what happened so that's what it came down to a lot of people who didn't who didn't have homes or was in them and then people who didn't have a good debt coverage ratio in their personal finances to cover you know unemployment or you know had that you know emergency fund saved up you know in case times got bad those people lost their homes also to compound it and then you had the People with second, third, fourth homes, especially in the you know southeast and then the uh, southwest region of the United States, they just walked away because if you look on the news, it was it was like Sodom and Gomorrah. They said the world was coming to an end, you know. So that's that's where it was. Now in two thousand twenty two, everybody got low mortgage rates. The underwriting qualifications for banks is way more stringent. Um, so it ain't. It won't be so the people who qualify and have the capital to own homes own homes now of course you have those 
YouTube people that's out there to say they got 500 doors and all this other stuff and they look like they just got pubes on their upper lip, you know, but they got 500 doors and all that. Those people going to fail because they got bridge loans and all that other crazy debt. But for the most part, most people got fixed rate debt. Um, and so we're not going to see that big walk, you know, that big walk away theory. I mean, now if unemployment got to 10%, yeah, people are going to walk away. But I don't foresee it's going to be a big scenario like it was 2008 where people, you know, interest rates just ballooned because they was in arm payments and stuff like that. So I don't think we're going we gonna to get that. But the prices come down from the wish price level that they were at. Hell yeah. But the value of the home is not going back to 2008, 2009 levels. That just ain't happening. Very interesting. I wish I could tell you all, all you guys, what my... Uh, future thinking would be but i didn't experience it like kirby did so we will see what happens um if you guys have a story of uh that happened to you guys maybe in 2008 we'd love to hear it in the comment section down below uh, don't forget to hit the like button subscribe button share with everybody you know and we'll see you guys in the next video